Come on in, kids. Right. Gather around the computer right. here. What's up? What's up with them funny colors on the picture frame and funny light colors in the picture frame and cylinder? Well, the picture frame, as you call it, is actually a temporal viewport. And the chamber, as you call it, is actually a teleportation chamber. It's uh, a... Tele teleportation, yeah. What exactly is that? I mean, I've heard songs about it, but... Well, you know, in Star Trek, they say, beam me up, Scotty. Well, that's teleportation. This is a way to build a time portal and to move people, possibly, back in time. You don't yes. believe me. No. But you no. see all those flashing lights there, and there will be a burst every once in a while? Well, that's just keeping the door open to the vortex so we can move something back in time. And then we have to enter in the latitude, and I want to enter in the latitude and the longitude for uh, a Union camp that was just outside of Gettysburg. The longitude in 1863 and July 1st, just before the Gettysburg Battle, and the time is 10.50 in the morning I put in there. Now when I hit time shift, you might want to stand back a little bit. That camera is going to disappear, and it's going to appear back in at this time, at this location. And we're going to see on here what that camera is taking. Now remember, the camera moves. I've got it set to move the camera every so often, because it doesn't really totally materialize when it gets back there. It's just kind of like a mirage. And rather than draw attention to itself, I thought it was better to move. You'll see a flash every once in a while. Well, when you see the flash on here, that's when the camera is actually moving from one place to the other. Now, when I hit this, stand back and watch. You'll see it's back in time. And you'll see on here that there are people of Civil War. And see those kids in the Civil War? What are the women doing in the military camp? Oh, that's what they called camp followers. The women and the children, they, they went along with their husbands to the camps and the women were just nurses. Why are the kids there? Well, same reason. If the mothers and dads went, the kids had to go to. They helped out the best they could. Some became musicians and played drums and flutes. Others just helped around the camp. That's cool. Can we go back in time too? Well, Brett, I haven't determined if it's safe for us to go back in time yet. Maybe the next time you come. Well, what about Lacey? Why doesn't she go back in time? She doesn't look like she really wants to go. <laughs> yeah, no, she doesn't look like she wants to go. Well, it's time for you guys to go now. Uh, the next time you come, maybe we'll be able to go back in time.
already met my clumsy sister Rachel. <laughs> yeah, I live a few miles down the road, down this road. And what do you guys do out here anyway? <laughs> Our grandfather was captured by some Confederate soldiers. There are any Confederate soldiers around here? Trust me, there are. Yeah, and we better get going to find him. Come on, let's go this way. I saw him taking down here. You better hurry. I told you there's Confederates here. Yeah, you're right. I bet that's where they're holding Grandpa. We should try to get in there and get him. I wonder where he is. We'll have to search the camp. Sounds fun. We'll have to be careful, though. Okay. Hey, look. I think they're setting up camp over there. Oh, look. I bet they've got him in there. And the commander. There he is, the big fat one. Yeah, I bet he's leading up the the attack force, the Confederate force. You like the description book also? Stupid Can't believe they have Grandpa. We have to see them. Look, I bet he's guarding Grandpa. We're gonna have to get past him if we want to get Grandpa back. Look at that belly. He's got a gun. Rachel is going to stay behind to take care of him. 
If she does that, the time portal will close and should be trapped back in time. That's okay, Brett. Yeah. I'll tell your mom about it. Yeah. She's gonna kill me. It's from Rachel. July 24th, 1942. Dear Mom, for you, it has only been a few days since I disappeared, but for me, it has been a long, rewarding lifetime. How many people can say they were born in the late 20th century, lived to see the new millennium, and then grew up, married, and raised a family in the late 19th century, and finally grew old back in the 20th century? My life has been an impossible paradox. I can honestly say that I have no regrets. I am sure Brett told you about Matthew. Well, we were eventually married. We had 78 wonderful years together. We had two boys, Blake and Jeremy. I have lived long enough to see eight grandchildren, 18 great grandchildren. I have truly had a storybook life. Please, don't mourn for me. I am certain I made the right decision. If you are interested in knowing where I am to be buried, it is Mount Olivet Cemetery in Hanover, Pennsylvania. When the time comes, I have arranged to be buried next to my husband. Our plots are next to the chapel on the hill. Remember, I made the right decision, and I have a rewarding full life filled with much love. Please, don't mourn for me. Your daughter, Rachel. <laughs>